Hello and welcome to the 76 tutorial in the Cocos 2 djs version 3 series. In this part we're going to be looking at the UI list view element. We'll be using the source code from the 7th tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. Cocos 2 djs provides us with a UI extension which contains loads of UI elements enabling us to create great menus, HUDs, etc. In this tutorial we will look at the UI list view element the list view element allows you to contain other elements and scroll through them such as a menu. This is great when there is too many uh, elements to practically place on screen. It could be used for credits as well in a game and it could allow the user to scroll through them. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is include the extension module into our project. And to do that it's really simple. Just open up your project and go to project.json. It's opening up in a text editor. And on this line where it says modules, you just want to add after Cocos 2D extensions. It's that simple to include extensions into your project. Now we just minimize that so we don't need it. And now what we're going to do is open up app.js as we're going to be coding our UI list view. So let's just comment out the sprite so it doesn't interfere visually. So I'm going to do var list view equals new ccui dot list view now we're going to do list view and then we're going to set the direction so dot set direction and here we're going to do ccui dot scroll view dot dir which stands for direction and we're going to change we're going to set it as vertical now we're just going to do list view dot set touch enable so we can actually interact with it and so we're gonna put true for this I'm gonna do list view dot set bounce enabled and we're gonna set this to true and what this does is if you scroll it beyond its bounds it'll bounce back instead of just stopping at the end a lot of mobile applications for many years, pretty much since the uh, dawn of the new smartphone age, so around about 2008, have used this bounce feature. Obviously, it's being used in different ways, but it's being used in some form because it looks a little more dynamic, as you'll see in a moment. Now, what we're going to do is list view dot set background image. Again, not all of these parameters are necessary. You will have to choose them depending on your need, but we're, we're going to set the background. We're just going to use an image that we've already got. So, hello world underscore PNG, which is declared in the resource.js. Now we're going to do list view dot set content size cc dot size 1280 by 100. Uh, and once we run it, you'll see what some of these parameters are about. List view dot set anchor point. We're just setting this so we can position it according to the middle of this node. So cc dot p size dot width. Mm, yeah, that looks okay. For some reason, I thought there was something wrong here. That looks a okay. Sorry, that should be zero point five. I'm going on to the next step. Now what we can do is copy and paste this. Change this to set position. Change this to size dot width divided by two. Size dot height divided by two. Now what we can do is list view dot add event listener and then here we're going to put this dot selected item event and this will be called when you interact with the menu and now we're going to use this dot add child list view and well at the moment we don't actually have anything done uh, as in we don't have anything added actually this, we don't need this kind of comment at this. We don't need the event listener. Uh, as an extra task, you can look into the event listener if you need it, but generally you won't. What we're going to need to do is actually add some items. We're just going to have a for loop and we're going to add five UI buttons. You can add other 
uh, items as well, and that's an extra task for you. For var i equals zero, i less than five, i plus plus. Now, so what we're going to do is var button equals new ccui dot button the set name this just sets the name of the button so you can reference the afterwards this isn't necessary but it's just something that you can do if you need to access it particularly or reference it dot set touch enabled true button dot load textures and in here I'm going to do res dot close normal I'm going to do res dot close normal but we're going to change this to selected as we have a selected image in resources as well and this is just a disabled image but we're not going to set anything for it now list view dot push back custom item and we specify our button and it looks a okay for any errors we'll find out in a moment so let's open up terminal cd to our project directory run the cocos command okay let's just inspect the element line 23 what's it moaning about mm. So line 23 is saying, I believe the G should be capital. Let's go back to the web browser, refresh. Line 31, okay, it's a different error now. Line 31 should be CCUI, not CC. Oot. Go back to the web browser, refresh. And we, okay, there we have it working, so if we just close that. And now we have our scroll menu. And if we, or a list view, and we can just scroll through our buttons. And we can obviously click them as well. And if we were to add event listeners, they could do separate functionality. Maybe one could be an audio trigger, one could take you to another scene. But let's just go back to our text editor, change this to 50. Go back to Chrome, refresh. And now we have a bunch of items. So this is great as, uh, and also if we go back, we say set content. So I set it to 1280, which as you can see here, is this 1280. And if the image is more than 1280, the background image, you will only see 1280, 1280 pixels worth. And you set the height to 100 pixels, hence you can only see this much. And also what's great about that is, it's not just about seeing what's inside in terms of the background image, but you can only see a hundred pixels worth of content, so that's the reason they're clipped off. So this is a great way to hide contents instead of having to do some fancy tricks using loads of layers and overlapping. This is a fantastic way to do it. So that is it for the UI list view. Uh, we now have it set up. Here are a few tasks for you to do. Add other elements to this, not just to the for loop, but just try and get rid of the for loop and just add other elements that you've learned about. Set the direction for the UI list view in a different way, aka over here. And check out the other methods that are, that are available, because even though we've covered quite a few, there are plenty more. More information to help you can be found in the Cocos 2DJS API guide and the sample provided with Cocos 2DJS. In the next tutorial, we will cover using the UI loading bar. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video, just directly message us via YouTube, or the required link for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.